Okay, time to give this a run and have a look at uh, what our circuit is doing, how it's performing. To start with, we're going to leave our inductive kickback charge to the battery disconnected. As I said before, it goes into this smoothing cap through our amp meter there and then into our battery. But we'll leave that disconnected and the only load will be our 18 ohm resistor across our tank circuit which of course once again is the inside coil. The power supply at the moment is turned off. What we're going to do first is see just how much effect and power the signal generator is uh, putting into the circuit just so we can eliminate anything coming from that. It's 4 volts peak to peak so it'll be 2 volts on the top side and that 2 volts is going through a 220 ohm resistor so it will be very little but uh, we'll switch it on anyway our frequency is 3.28 kilohertz with a 23% duty cycle and we are running a square wave of course the yellow trace is the one across the collector emitter and you can see we have nothing at all really from our signal generator in the way of power going into the system Okay, so uh, we'll turn the signal generator off, we'll turn our power supply on. So I've got it limited to one amp just in case there's some sort of malfunction and uh, we start to get smoke. We haven't got too much current going through there. So we'll hit the output button, as you can see we are drawing nothing from the circuit because it is not running. So we'll hit our signal generator. Now I'm sorry it's quite loud the hum. Um, at a certain frequency it just hits a very loud uh, point you could say. Um, and that is also happens to be the point where its performance is best. So at the moment with our battery disconnected, we are simply um, dissipating our power from our tank circuit coil across that 18 ohm resistor. The blue trace is across the 18 ohm resistor, and the blue trace is on 1 volt division, then our time, as you can see, is 50 microseconds. You can also see that our duty cycle is very low. And like I said, that is 23%. So at the moment, this cap is pretty much well built up as much as voltage as the system will allow it to put out on the primary coil side in the way of the inductive kickback. And that voltage at the moment is 47.6 volts. That is what is in that capacitor. You can see our channel 2 waveform across our tank circuit um, has a peak to peak voltage of 2.12 volts. Our current draw is 11 milliamps at 12 volts and our charge battery is at 12.51 at the moment. So what we're going to do now is I'm also going to hook up the inductive kickback circuit Onto our battery, we will get a spark because, like I said, the cap had uh, 42 odd volts in it. So we have our 12.5 on, it's flicking up to 2, of course, because it's charging, and we're putting in 8 to 9 milliamps into that battery at that voltage. And uh, yeah, like I said, that hum is quite loud at this frequency. 100 hertz either way and it pretty much all shuts up. But, uh, this is where it performs best so this is where we'll leave it. <coughs> now, if we have a look at the scope now, we can see that in our transistor switches on or starts conducting when we get our zero volts across the uh, emitter collector junction. You can see the transistor switches off and the inductive kickback 
is arrested pretty quick by the cap and the battery. So there's our current flow into our battery. Then that ceases to exist and we just got our battery voltage during the rest phase. So for this period of time our primary coil or inductor has expelled all of its energy but you'll see here in the waveform we still manage to get one half of our wave in the form of power going across that resistor even though our primary inductor is at its rest phase. So at the moment channel 2 we have a peak to peak voltage of 2.88 across our 8 ohm resistor, 18 ohm resistor. Um, the maximum voltage across our emitter collector of 27.2 volts and um, the RMS voltage of channel 1 is 13.2. Not that I think that matters too much at all. But uh, it's the system up and running. And um, it seems to be working quite well. It'd be well worth looking into a little more. But once again, 11 milliamps at 12 volts going in, 9 milliamps at 12.53 going into our charge battery and our tank circuit um, of course is dissipating power across that resistor so that's basically the first run what we're going to do next is we'll stick a 1 ohm resistor across here and we will once again start the system up with a scope across that resistor and we will have a look at the um, input and you'll see that it is pure DC, there's no ripple in it due to those two caps and we will also see we do not get a current increase when we hook up the charge battery to the output side of the primary inductor or the primary coil of the whole inductor and uh, as you would have seen once we did that we also got a power increase in our tank circuit as well so that's what we have at the moment once again that is the frequency duty cycle and waveform I am using I said the yellow trace is across the collector emitter and the blue trace is across the 80 ohm resistor come tank circuit. Alright, so uh, next video, like I said, we're going to chuck a 1 ohm resistor across the input. Uh, we'll have to do it on the negative side, of course, because my scope shares common ground with the power supply. Unfortunately, it's not isolated, so we kind of have to do it back to front, but. Um, it will definitely show us exactly what happens when we connect, collect, uh, connect another load uh, to the total output of this transformer. Cheers guys!